the line that I, I love quoting of Carlo Ginzburg where he says that he starts every bit of research with a euphoria of ignorance. Correct. Yes. I'll go there. You'll go there. <laughs> Uh, and and in a way, it's an aphrodisiac. It's euphoric. It's it, it's it's highly um, inspiring. Well, it's first love, isn't it? Really, it's first love. Come on, friends, okay. say something. No, no, no. It's okay. I, I love the I love these moments um, because Brian. One of the things you told me in a communication we had was that you were particularly interested in asking Anish Kapoor about the whole notion of scale. I mean, I think it's scale, is a, scale is a, is a Why, key, how, how so? key, key problem. Um, Articulate um, that a little well, more. Well, it, it, it's a problem of the imagination in the end. It's not a matter of size. It's a matter, it's a matter of um, um, how um, a big or small object, because size is not really the issue, as I say, um, can hold a, a, some kind of poetic truth. And it's, it's what we grapple with. We grapple with how insignificant we are and how, if you like, um, the mythology of um, um, our understanding, and I use the word mythology advisedly, of the universe, reflects back on our sense of how we almost don't exist ourselves. And that, that tension somewhere is the problem and the question of scale. Of course, um, taking on the most fundamental um, of all things, which is in, in somewhere along the way, which is the problem of time. St scale influences time. Time changes when scale um, um, affects you when there is that moment of dreaming, when you look at something that, that strikes um, a poetic awe or whatever it is that scale can do. And I think those things are very, very real. We have, we have to learn as artists how to articulate those things. That's really the job. The, the other thing I would say about scale, as my friend John Hassel always points out, is that we don't have very good intuitions about it, so that we tend to scale things up in our mind and not remember that a change in scale is a change in quality as well. So, for instance, to give one example, in my early life I was quite involved in the commune movement in England and I used to go and visit communes and I discovered that every single political system you can imagine works at a small enough scale. So there were communist communities, fascist communities, far right wing communities and they all worked because actually what made them work were the think honor and shame that that's what works in a small community people know each other and so they don't want to behave badly because they don't want to get a bad reputation but by the same token nearly all political systems fail at a large enough scale um, because scale actually changes things it it isn't just the same thing bigger you know when you when you blow up a mouse to the size of an elephant it immediately collapses because its legs don't grow big enough you know um, because weight increases as a function of volume, not a function of height sort of thing. Um, so you have to remember always that things are always different at different scales. And the same is true with uh, sculpture and with sound and with any other activity that we're involved in, that, that um, we're making something different when we make it bigger. In, in, a, in a way, you're articulating something slightly different from Anish Kapoor, as I understand it, that size actually does matter. <laughs> so, he, so he says, he's wrong, he's wrong. <laughs> scale is also a moral issue. Yes. Moral. S scale is a moral question, because moral questions are all about relationships and preserving integrity among relationships. And so the moral energy that's produced by something that's out of scale, you know, can be really morally off-center, you know, and really out of its own depth. And I think one of the crucial things about Anisha's work is the scale is held in a kind of moral set of relationships, of decisions that have been made, so that the scale holds integrity. And I think what Brian is talking about is something that I live with every day in theater and, and in performance, because once something gets outside of its own real scale, it loses integrity and the relationships are no longer real. The relationships 
are no longer, people don't have to relate to each other with honesty because the scale takes over and, and the honesty level is diminished and that's the issue in large scale government. You know, it's because uh, as soon as the need for honesty, that honesty is visible, as soon as it's not visible, then you're into all kinds of trouble. And so one of the most intense things we do as artists is to make sure that honesty remains visible across a range of scale. And as Anish said, scale is a, primarily a mental and spiritual question. And, and it has to do with what a mountain holds but also what, uh, what, what uh, 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 a tiny, you know, pin holds. You know, it has to do with what is held in the object or in the experience. It's funny you should be talking about, uh, because I, as you were talking about scale, I was thinking about the miniature. And I was thinking precisely of, you know, the, the, the line of Gershom Scholem about Benjamin, where he says that in, 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 a, in a small piece of sand, he saw, he was inscribed the whole of the Shema Israel. And that, it, you know, yeah. for a, a Jew who is moving, he can't be a major collector. So he needs a diminutive, he needs the tiniest, he needs the smallest, he needs the most portable, the wandering Jew, that is. No, and, and, and obviously the biggest things in our lives are happening at infinitesimal scale. You know, things you can't see are changing your life. I mean, that's one of the most powerful things going on in the world right now, is this incredibly in, intimate, invisible scale. 